unlikely connections, from cookies to confrontations. No, Rachel was trouble, and Tyson didn't need that. Chris didn't either, but if he took her back again, they deserved each other. Jillian. She wasn't seeing anyone at the moment, but Christy recalled Jillian had real daddy issues. Dating someone like Tyson might complicate things. Jillian would enjoy it, but Tyson would not be okay if she started calling him daddy. So Jillian was out. Miranda was seeing Vince, but that was new, and Christy had a bad feeling about him. He was friends with Blake, and after Tyson opened her eyes, she saw her ex-fiancé as the spoiled person he truly was. Vince probably wasn't much better. However, Miranda might actually be a good match for Tyson. Her outgoing personality and positive energy could help Tyson break out of his shell. Christie's other friends found Miranda a bit too much and reckless. The truth was, Miranda just had some social awkwardness. Nothing Tyson's patient nature couldn't handle. He might even boost her confidence. Miranda was a second-generation American with Mexican heritage. She was a few inches shorter than Christie, with lovely caramel skin, kind brown eyes, full lips and long brown hair. Miranda often complained about her rounder, but compared to her white friends. It wasn't just fat. She had strong muscles from her love of road cycling. To balance her fuller lower body, her breasts were petite. She often joked Christy must have gotten her share from the booby fairy. This kind of talk and her clinginess made Christy's other friends uncomfortable, but Christy found it funny. Miranda might be just what Tyson needed. Christy started her car and drove towards her neighborhood. But she took a side street just a block short of her house. Miranda Morneau lived with her parents in a nice five-bedroom home a block away from Christy's parents' mansion. Miranda was the oldest child, with an 18-year-old brother, Raul Jr., and a 16-year-old sister, Natalie. Christy felt a touch of jealousy when she saw her friend had siblings. She never told her parents this, though. Miranda's dad, Raul Sr., was a big shot in the stock market, and her mom, Marie, was doing really well with her business. Christy heard that Raul, Miranda's brother, just got a new truck for his 18th birthday. He was excited to see if Christy wanted to take a ride with him one night. Miranda laughed so hard when she told Christy this. Apparently, Raul thought he was some sort of ladies' man. Christy parked her car and walked up to the front door to ring the bell. Soon, Raul Jr. was at the door with a big smile. Good morning, Christy. You look great today, he said, trying to be smooth. She smiled back and raised an eyebrow. Good morning, Raul. Save that charm for your girlfriends. Christy, ignore him and come on back to the kitchen, Miranda called from inside. Raul just stood there, lost in Christy's blue eyes. She guessed he was wondering if she thought he was cool enough to have lots of girlfriends. Christy walked past him, noticing his muscles. He must spend a lot of time at the gym. Maybe that's where he got his attitude. As she moved to the kitchen, she felt Raoul's eyes on her. Junior, stop staring at my friend's butt. Stop being so dumb, Miranda snapped, making Christy's eyes widen with concern for her friend. I'm not, and stop calling me Junior, he shouted back. Then he looked at Christy, trying to play it cool again. Girls like it when a guy shows he appreciates their bodies. Christy shook her head. I'll introduce you to a friend of mine who knows how to treat a woman right, she said. Raoul's smile returned. Is this the mystery boyfriend you never talk about? The perfect guy? Miranda asked, her voice a bit sharp. Worried about Miranda, Christy looked at Raoul. Could we talk alone? She asked softly. Seeing his sister was upset, he nodded and left. Miranda grabbed Christy's hand. Never mind, we'll go to my room. Christy followed her to her bedroom. As soon as the door closed, Miranda's eyes filled with tears. Christy opened her arms and Miranda hugged her, crying. What happened? Christy asked when the crying slowed down. Miranda's sadness turned to anger. Vince is a racist jerk. Christy wasn't shocked but hit her feelings. What did he do? The day after we were together, he broke up with me in a text. Then he posted a picture of us with a nasty caption. What? Christy gasped in anger. The post got taken down but everyone saw it. It was so humiliating. Miranda started crying again. Christy silently fumed. If she could find a copy of that post, she knew who to give it to so Vince would get kicked out of university. She'd make sure of it. When Miranda stopped crying, she looked determined. That's it. No more dating until I graduate. There are no good guys here. Christy smiled. Does that mean you might check in on a friend of mine sometimes? Miranda wiped her eyes, confused. A friend? Tyson Kane. Miranda thought for a moment. I know that name. Christy sighed. The train terrorist runner. Oh, right. He stopped the train. His wife died and he got hurt. You've been helping him? Miranda asked. Christy blushed, remembering something private. Not exactly. He was fine physically when I went to him for math help. But he lost his wife and was really traumatized. 
I've been trying to get him to come to town but he can't handle cars. Miranda looked surprised at this side of her friend. And she gave a big smile. What? Christy asked cautiously. You keep surprising me, Christy. Don't make me sound like some kind of saint. I needed his help with math, and he was great at it. I wanted to help him back. He's really a great guy. Christy said. Miranda just smiled with a knowing look. I'm leaving soon. I feel better knowing someone was checking on him. Christy pleaded. Get him out walking around. Miranda suggested. Christy nodded. He swims in the lake early and goes for a six-mile walk after. He has a home gym too. Miranda looked impressed. So he knows physical therapy is important. Christy smiled. Oh yes. Sure, I can do that. Where is he? Miranda asked. Christy hugged her and cheered. Give me your phone and I'll add his info. Christy said. Miranda handed it over as Christy looked up the details on her own phone. He lives by the lake. Lucky guy. How'd he get that house? Miranda asked with a grin. Christy sighed. The homes there are passed down in families. He got it from his parents when they died. She finished putting Tyson's info into Miranda's phone. Miranda felt bad for her rude question. Christy's phone beeped with a message. It's my mom. I was supposed to meet her and my aunt at the club. I have to leave now. She quickly texted back saying she was on her way. Then she grabbed Miranda's arms and looked at her. I'm sorry about Vince. He's a jerk and he'll pay for what he did. Also, thanks for checking on Tyson. You won't regret it. He's great. She jumped up and ran downstairs trying to make it across town in five minutes. That was easy when you drive a fast car. Miranda watched her friend leave quickly. She wondered what exciting things were happening in her life now. She wasn't jealous of Christy. Well, maybe just a little. She looked at Tyson's address on her phone and decided to ride her bicycle on the new trail to visit him the next day. Miranda remembered the story about two students who burned down the town and died at a train crossing when they hit Tyson Kane's car, killing his wife. Curious, she grabbed her tablet and looked up the story. She followed some links and soon found information about Tyson. Wow, he's a big guy, she said when she saw a photo of the tall professor at a university event. His arm was around a slim woman, making him look even bigger. The woman was very pretty and had a similar skin tone to hers. Tyson looked very happy. Losing her must have been tough for him. If Christy thought he was a nice guy, Miranda was looking forward to meeting him. She smiled happily. He looked like a big teddy bear. She could use a hug after all the trouble Vince caused her. The lake water felt warmer than usual as Tyson swam through the small waves. He was getting stronger and could swim a bit farther each time before turning back. He was careful not to push too much. With little body fat, he had to keep moving or he'd sink. He glanced up and saw clear blue skies. It was going to be a lovely day. He thought he'd do some sunbathing. As he turned back, he saw Barbara's house with its rooftop deck. She had been watching over him for years, protecting him. He could see her binoculars catching the sunlight. Barbara had watched him struggle to get back to shore many times before Christy made him realize he had something to live for. Imani was gone. Hallucinations aside, she was not there anymore. It was Christy who told him that Barbara had taken on the role of a silent supporter. She had heard Barbara's quiet words of encouragement the morning she first saw him stumble out of the water. So his neighbor could see into his backyard from her roof and had binoculars. He thought about that as he continued to swim. He sighed and sighed. Tyson wasn't going to change his habits for his neighbor. He swam and sunbathed nude. That wasn't changing. He would just ignore the possibility of peaking barbers. He felt the water getting warmer and knew he was nearing the shore. The swim was over. Tyson wasn't tired at all. He stood in the five deep water, breathing deeply to feed his hungry muscles. He'd swim farther tomorrow. He looked at his house. He loved his little haven. The morning sun felt good. So he turned his face to it, closed his eyes, and ran his hands over his head to squeeze the water out of his hair. It was getting long, his tight black curls almost like a manny's. He walked out of the water and onto his lawn, stretching his arms over his head and bending side to side. A sharp shriek made him open his eyes. He saw a pretty young woman staring at him with her hands over her mouth. She wore brightly colored, tight-fitting clothes. She spun and disappeared up the path beside his house. He would either have to add a lock to the gate or put up a bigger private sign. Miranda raced her bicycle along the curvy path, her mind running fast. What had she just seen? Finally she stopped at a rest area with benches and took a drink. Christy hadn't mentioned any family living with Tyson. Maybe a cousin? She was sure he was an only child, so the naked man she saw wasn't a younger brother. She had noticed a family resemblance before her eyes focused on his nudity. 
The shriek surprised her too. She patted her cheeks to clear her head. It would take some time to forget that sight. Climbing back on her bicycle, she started moving again. She'd need to talk to Christy about her request. There seemed to be a problem, and it was an unusual one. Good morning, Tyson. Christy called him after her breakfast. Hey, Christy. How are you today? He answered. She smiled, hearing the joy in his voice. But then she remembered why she called, and her smile faded a bit. Can I come see you this afternoon? Of course. I'll make time for you, he joked. Staying for dinner? He sounded casual, but she sensed a bit of hope. Not today, she said. That's okay. Do you remember your first visit to my place? He asked. That surprised her, but she smiled again. How could I forget? He laughed. Well, another girl showed up in my backyard this morning. She screamed and ran away. Christy thought he sounded worried. What did she look like? She covered her face, but she had brown eyes, long brown hair, and a braid, and wore tight clothes with strange shoes. Ah uh, yes. That was my friend Miranda Morno. She rides her bike on the country roads for fun. I told her we were friends, and I visited you by the lake. I didn't know she'd drop by today. You told her about us? Tyson asked, sounding curious. Just that we're friends. I didn't share too much, she said with a smile. And I messed up our meeting, he sighed. Christy laughed. I wouldn't say that. You didn't scream? Her laughter grew louder. True, but I was more ready to fight. I remember asking you to prove who you were. He joined in, laughing. Right, you're a tough cookie. I'll talk to her. It'll be fine. She was just surprised, Christy assured him. So should I get a lock for the gate or a bigger private sign, he joked. Is that what the sign says? I thought it said, this way to see privates, she said and laughed. He chuckled. Okay, Miss Smarty Pants. See you this afternoon. Bye. Bye. Christy hung up and quickly got into her car. She needed to talk to Miranda. She could have walked, but Christy knew a few places where Miranda might be if not at home. When she rang the doorbell, Ray Old Jr. answered with a big smile. Two days in a row. You're either here all the time or never, he teased. She smiled back, amused by his comment. Looking for Miranda, she said sweetly. He sighed dramatically. One day I hope you'll come to see me. She raised an eyebrow. Not today. Rail stepped back and waved her upstairs. She's back from a ride. She's in her room. Christy smiled, sensing his eyes on her as she climbed the stairs. Staring at me won't help your dream, she called over her shoulder, hearing his frustrated sigh as she reached Miranda's door. She knocked. Miranda, it's me, Christy. It was a small yelp, and some sounds like things falling. One second, Miranda called from behind the door. Christy waited, trying not to think about the strange buzzing she heard. The door opened and Miranda stepped out, her face flushed. Let's sit on the patio. It's a nice day, she said quickly. Christy could still hear a buzzing noise. Are you sure you don't need to turn that off first? She asked gently. Miranda looked embarrassed. Okay, can you help me move the bed? They went in and moved the bed to retrieve the personal massager, which had fallen between the mattress and wall. Miranda turned it off and put it in her bedside drawer. After pushing the bed back, they sat facing each other. Miranda looked embarrassed. I heard you had an eventful visit at Tyson's this morning, Christy began. Miranda's eyes widened. You didn't tell me Tyson had family living with him and that they don't wear clothes. Oh, you saw him naked, Christy said, grinning. She enjoyed this. Saw him? He came out of the lake like a god. He's amazing, Miranda said with admiration. Who is he? Tyson's younger cousin? Christy laughed and Miranda smiled at the happy sound. Miranda, that was Tyson. Miranda looked confused. No, mister, Kane is almost sixty. This man looked like he was in his late thirties or early forties. Tyson lives alone. The man you saw was him. He swims every day. She held Miranda's hand. He went through a lot after the accident. He lost weight by training hard. He's still very dedicated to his workouts. Miranda slowly realized. He's your mystery boyfriend, she gasped. Christy smiled softly. Boyfriend isn't the right term. We're close friends, but there's no romantic love. Though you're close to him, Miranda guessed. Christy's smile grew. Tyson is wonderful. Miranda squealed with excitement as Christy confirmed her guess. Christy raised her hands to calm her. But no telling anyone else. Tyson wasn't looking for any of this. When we first met, he was almost always inside his house. He didn't want me in his backyard. He didn't want to tutor me. He didn't want me to join him for his afternoon walk. 
we wouldn't have gotten together if I hadn't decided I wanted him and chased him so much. He was really worried about our age difference. It didn't bother me as much because he's so attractive. Miranda thought about Christie's request for her to check on Tyson. Were you expecting me to start a relationship with Tyson too? Christie looked shocked. No, oh my gosh, no. I just wanted someone to keep Tyson from shutting himself away again. He needs someone to talk to face to face. If you get to know him and decide you want to start a relationship, that's something you'll need to figure out with him. He's wonderful. But if I hadn't pushed, we wouldn't have happened. He's a gentleman. She smiled warmly. Miranda nodded as she thought about what she'd learn. She knew it was too soon after Vince for her to look for another boyfriend. Honestly, she needed a break from dating. Having a guy to talk to might be nice. An idea popped into her head of something else that would be really nice. You said he likes to work out, right? She asked. Christy nodded so Miranda jumped off the bed and pulled her friend with her. They hurried downstairs and out to the backyard. They went to the large two-story garage at the end of the driveway. Once inside, Miranda led Christy upstairs to the loft. They saw several old bicycles hanging from the rafters. She turned and faced her blonde friend. We can fix up one of these old bikes for him and he can join me on my bike rides, Miranda said excitedly. Chrissy thought it was a great idea, but worried about the bikes. It might not be strong enough for Tyson. He could probably break them if he really pushed. However, getting him a new bike that was strong enough and the right size was a genius idea. It would give him exercise, let him leave the neighborhood, and it gave Miranda a reason to spend time with him too. Miranda, you are a genius but we need a better bike. Can you take me to a bike shop, the best one right now? Christy asked with excitement in her voice. Miranda caught the excitement and nodded quickly. I know just where to go. Equal sign. Tyson heard the sound of car tires on the gravel of his driveway and smiled. Christy was here. When he heard another set of tires, he turned to the front door. A second car? He checked the oven. Everything was good so he headed over to the door to open it. In the spot furthest from the door was Christie's sporty white car. She was getting out, smiling big at him. In the spot closest to the house, a blue pickup was stopping. He saw the pretty brunette who surprised him this morning in the passenger window. She was looking at him with wide eyes and a nervous smile. The truck's engine went silent and the lovely brunette stepped out. She wore a new tight outfit but sneakers this time. On the other side of the pickup was a tall, good-looking young man with the same complexion as the brunette. He was watching Tyson with an amused smile. Tyson stood on his steps wearing an apron, shorts that probably weren't visible and sandals. Do you greet all your visitors wearing only an apron? Christy called out, happy. He lifted the apron to show his shorts to Christy and a brunette squeaked in surprise, probably thinking he was naked underneath. You know I don't get visitors except for you and George. Besides, I was baking cookies, he explained. By this time, Christy was standing next to the other woman. Tyson, this is my good friend Miranda Mono, and this is her brother, Raul Jr. Tyson could see Raul liked being called handsome, but didn't like being called young or junior. Hello, Miranda Raul. He got a bright smile from Miranda and a pleased smile from the young man but Raul still looked amused. Maybe he didn't like seeing a man in an apron. I'm really sorry I went into your backyard this morning without permission, Miranda said sincerely. Tyson waved a hand. Would you like a freshly baked shortbread cookie? Ooh, the attractive man is inviting us in with sweets. What could go wrong? Christy teased and stepped forward, holding Miranda's arm. Tyson stepped back and held the door for his guests. The ladies went through the door, and Raoul stopped inside with an annoyed look. As Christy showed Miranda around, he looked back at Tyson who raised an eyebrow. How can she call you attractive when you're dressed for women's work? The young man said, annoyed. Women's work? Who told you that nonsense and pretended it was valuable? Tyson said with a grin. He went into the kitchen, picked up a cookie still warm from the oven and handed it to Raoul. The man took a bite and nodded as it melted in his mouth with a gentle crunch. Tyson smiled and offered the plate of cookies to the ladies who each took one. Oh, this is so good, Christy said as she approached. Thank you for the sweets. She hugged him and kissed him. Tyson felt self-conscious, but kissed her back until she pulled away. Raoul was staring at her in shock. What? He's a true gentleman? He cooks well, keeps his home tidy and he's very attractive, Christy said. Those are women's jobs, Raoul started angrily. Why do you think certain jobs should be for men or women? I thought I had old-fashioned ideas, but yours made me feel young. Tyson shot back. Raoul stared at him. How old are you? Fifty-nine. What? Raoul turned to Christy. You're dating an old man? Tyson looked at Miranda. What's that? Grandfather, she said softly. Tyson wanted to be mad, but he kind of agreed with Raoul. He couldn't understand why Christy liked him so much. He shrugged. 
I might be old enough to be one, but I have no kids or grandkids. That chance is gone, he said sadly. Raoul wasn't done. He turned to Christy again who watched him with a small smile. I don't get it. I'm strong and handsome as you said. What does this man have that I don't? I can bake cookies, Tyson said with a smile. I can teach you how to make chocolate chip cookies. Women and love them, and the fact that you made them will win you big points. My gym friends would laugh at me, Raoul protested. Christy shared a sad look with Miranda. I think we found the reason behind Raoul's outdated ideas about manhood. Outdated? Being a man isn't outdated, he snapped. No, but with your attitude towards women it is. You're smart. You can be better, Christy said bluntly. Raoul looked back at Tyson. Okay, you will teach me how to make cookies if you beat me in arm wrestling. Tyson looked at the young man. He was strong and wanted to prove himself to Christy. Tyson sighed and looked at Raoul's strong arms. This was going to hurt, but he was used to pain. Okay, fine, Tyson said, taking off his apron. Raoul saw Tyson's body and seemed a bit worried. You can take your shirt off if that'll help, Tyson suggested. Soon Raoul was topless too. He had smooth, long muscles. Christy nodded at him, making Raoul smile confidently. Tyson moved to the kitchen counter and braced his elbow there. Raoul locked hands with him and they gripped the countertop. Christy put her hand on top of theirs. When I lift my hand you start. Ready? They nodded. Oh. Tyson felt the strain immediately. Raoul was very strong but overconfident. Looking into his eyes, Tyson smiled and pushed harder. The pain grew but Tyson didn't stop. Raoul's confident look started to change to surprise, then fear. Tyson's smile grew. Arm wrestling is about strength and pain. How much pain can you handle, Raoul? Raoul winced as Tyson's grip tightened. Ready to get serious? Tyson asked. Raoul tried to hide his surprise as Tyson began to force his arm back. At a 45 degree angle, Raoul yelped and jumped back, letting go of Tyson's hand. He shook his hand to get the feeling back. For an old man, you're very strong, he exclaimed. Raoul, Miranda scolded, but Tyson laughed. Christy smirked. How many arm wrestling matches have you won? Tyson smiled shyly as he rubbed his arm. That was my first, maybe the last. The kid's strong. Raoul looked surprised and proud. Don't tell him that. It'll go to his head. Miranda sighed. Tyson shook his head and grinned at Raoul. Let's make some cookies. Put your shirt back on. He put his apron back on. Raoul frowned. It's hard to take you seriously in that apron. It looked better on my wife, but try cooking bacon shirtless and you'll understand. He looked at Raoul. Don't ever try it without clothes. That made everyone laugh. Do you know what it takes for a man to wear this proudly? Raoul looked unsure. Confidence. Women like that. It's not about being cocky. Confidence means being fine with who you are. It's what's inside that counts. Raoul smiled and nodded. Let's make cookies. Christy and Miranda watched as Tyson taught Raoul how to make chocolate chip cookies from scratch. Raoul did all the work, following Tyson's instructions. When the cookies were ready, the ladies cheered for Raoul's first successful attempt. Raoul smiled at Tyson. What did you used to do? Tyson sighed. I was a math teacher. No way, you're a math nerd. Raoul chuckled. Christy walked over and leaned on Tyson. Certified genius level math nerd, she said. Tyson chuckled and gave her a sweet kiss. You say the nicest things. Tyson looked at Raoul, who still seemed uncomfortable with how Christy showed affection. If you're so smart, why aren't you teaching? Raoul said in a mean tone. Tyson's smile faded. People keep asking me that, and I keep telling them I'm retired. He's got PTSD, you idiot, Miranda snapped. Raoul looked at him in surprise. Tyson gave Miranda a sharp look, then turned to Christy. You've been talking about me with others? He asked stiffly. Christy met his gaze and nodded. Miranda had a great idea, and we're here to make it happen. Tyson was caught off guard by her boldness. Idea? Come outside, Christy said with a big grin, and Tyson felt he had no choice but to follow her energy. Miranda was grinning widely too. Raoul followed, frowning. In the driveway, Raoul pulled off the tarp covering the back of his pickup. Tyson saw a road bike. 